Thank you. So welcome. So uh, thank you and uh, welcome from my side too. Um, yeah, today I want to introduce you briefly about our workflow um, on developing ontologies and because yeah, we at NFDI for CAD first didn't really um, see many catalysis related ontologies, we started to define our own vocabularies and yeah, quickly came up with this idea you can see here. So um, the presentation of uh, where lists are basically in the semantic context up to the whole uh, level and the whole uh, structuring of ontologies. And yeah, we thought that a good intermediate aim would be to first aim for thesaurus to get all our concepts sorted and to then proceed um, to define the ontologies by defining relations, classes and so on based on this um, thesaura. And uh, yeah, we wanted to start or we want to start uh, to define SCOS files. So um, yeah, we use the simple knowledge organization system to set up these vocabularies. And yeah, in first steps, um, we gathered existing ontologies, which are some in some way, um, yeah, touching the domain of catalysis research. And we tried to cluster those uh, um, ontologies for our needs. And uh, yeah, what is now our work in progress kind of is uh, the term collection. And for this, we use Excel templates, which were uh, generated by Surround Australia. Um, which is an Australian initiative, but we found their Excel templates kind of useful. And yeah, we tried to implement some workflows for automating this um, SCOS file generation, such that in a future step, we have um, a better yeah, first starting point of generating ontologies for our catalysis research domain and uh, to extend, maybe extend existing ontologies or um, start from existing ontologies and extend ontologies by adding many terms um, by the concepts we have gathered from the community. And yeah, to show how our rough workflow works, um, I uh, would like to introduce this slide here, which we have also um, published recently. So uh, our general workflow is kind of recursive. So first we gather the terms from the domain experts and try to generalize them and unify them. This is all based on the list level. So we are basically talking about Excel files um, and then the formalization takes place as a SCOS hierarchy. So within these Excel files, we have um, by the terms of SCOS narrower and SCOS broader, the possibility to kind of sort them in the first place. And um, yeah, so, such uh, as that retrieving the SCOS files. So obtaining hierarchy files with a shared common vocabulary. And uh, yeah, afterwards we want to try and to um, describe our use cases um, with the concepts we have already gathered in the SCOS files. Afterwards, after this thesaurus level, the ontology level will come where we can add relations and constraints, formalize even more. Uh, so gather the concepts together into classes and then obtain maybe a first ontology or yeah, ontologies, uh, which we then kind of recursively try on our use cases until we have um, kind of usable ontologies. So yeah, this formalizing of the uh, SCOS hierarchies is our intermediate term, as I've told. And yeah, now I want to show you how we started with the list uh, development on an example on biocatalysis. Uh, we started with a collection of um, different processes, for example, as concept. And um, yeah, we tried to define them as classes, but as you can see here, uh, even if we have the class cultivation, subclasses, bacteria strain, cultivation condition, and um, we almost always came up with some kind of same properties for uh, different processes. Um, so yeah, we, we recognized there was something odd, so maybe we could restructure it. But um, basically what we try to is to um, gather classes with subclasses where each subclass contains a set of properties, which could then later on be used to describe processes which are relevant in order to, for example, do a, um, an enzyme assay. So with this in mind, um, I want to present you a small workflow we have set up to come from these Excel concept tables into a more user-friendly um, yeah, way of uh, uh, visit, revisiting the data. And uh, yeah, there we programmed um, some so-called um, yeah, SCOS converter Python code, uh, which reads in such an Excel file, converts it into a SCOS turtle file and also provide some documentation file, which is an HTML document where you can throw, uh, scroll through and a dendrogram where you can interactively click through the, all the concepts listed there. 
Um, and yeah, this has the reason that we are a consortium which is set up um, basically on mainly domain experts rather than really ontology experts. So we found it more easy to have a presentable way of our vocabulary because then we could make sure that more users could revisit the data and maybe yeah produce some more uh, concepts we should take care of. So with this in mind, um, as I've teased just now, we set up first basic um, small process related vocabularies, which you can see here, for example. And yeah, under the term process, we listed some conditions and within this conditions type, we listed all the process conditions we, we could imagine. And then um, when describing, for example, processes of biologic catalysis, we had uh, things like essay condition where we listed all the uh, process specific sets of uh, the conditions. Um, and with this, yeah, I want to close the talk. Um, if, uh, yeah, some, some more notes on this is that the overall workflow, I was not able to really show here because of time issues. So I want to shortly present this one. Um, so the, the basic workflow of NFDI for CUT looks like this, that we not only want to do the ontology anal analysis as I've shown you and together the concept lists uh, we could use to extend ontologies, but also to provide an ontology database, which we then extend by the concepts, uh, do some metadata and research data processing where we uh, connect the ontologies with metadata or real research data. And uh, yeah, as we recognize that it's a quite complicated and tedious task to gather a vocabulary, we are experimenting as of now with NLP methods in order to yeah, get a more holistic approach on getting the vocabulary and to yeah, not oversee certain uh, gaps of research. And with this, I want to close and uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. Okay. Yes, uh, so uh, thank you. I hope you can all see my slides and uh, listen to me. Um, I would like to tell you how uh, we are starting the development of ontologies. Um, like yesterday, I was talking about um, how uh, we try to reuse as much as possible, but at the same time, we um, also saw that there are some gaps um, within the ontology. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, within the on ontologies we found. And uh, to close those gaps, uh, we were looking at uh, NMR spectroscopy uh, domain and the uh, Raman spectroscopy domain uh, because um, they are the ones that uh, are uh, on the top of our priority list. And uh, we need them in order to uh, do metadata annotation in the uh, electronic lab notebooks like Commotion or in data repositories like the um, uh, NM archive, which is uh, in development and uh, to use them, for instance, for the um, population of dynamic dropdowns um, or to annotate um, the uploaded data via input forms. Um, and our approach, uh, I have not so many great slides with uh, pictures, I'm more of a text guy, uh, is the standard approach of first defining um, the scope. So basically saying we are focusing on um, like uh, NMR spectroscopy assays uh, first, uh, especially the pulse NMR spectroscopy assays. Um, and also our scope uh, is on describing the data sets um, with regard to what metadata do we need in order to find it in the data repository um, and to properly label it um, later on for, for uh, finding it when, when searching for an assay and how the assay is um, related and associated to a certain compound or sample. And then, of course, uh, we need to define our competency questions uh, regarding to that scope. So who uh, was involved, um, when and where, with what devices, in what context, in terms of project and study, what some substances uh, were used, um, uh, which can be identified via structural uh, descriptors, or um, also what file formats um, have been used and produced. And then, um, similarly um, to what we've just seen, we talked to the domain experts to find out um, what concepts and relations are needed. Um, and uh, we also start doing that uh, with a spreadsheet approach um, and uh, collecting uh, term labels and their definitions and discussing those uh, in online calls um, to clarify and uh, from there to 
find out um, what uh, terms can already be reused from existing ontologies. So sometimes um, terms are used or the labels are a little bit different, but the term and the concept might already be present. So uh, first collecting all those terms and concepts and then going on the hunt using um, lookup services um, to find if they're already existing. Um, and then uh, for NMR, I uh, started doing a draft, also a visualization, which is, um, as we've heard, easier to talk to domain experts to see the connections um, between the concepts and to see the rela uh, relations. And yes, to discuss this and see uh, if there are uh, any errors in there so far, or are we um, quite good? And at the same time, we can show that we can possibly reuse a lot. In our case with uh, NMR spectroscopy, um, we can rely on the fact that um, there are a lot of classes defined in um, the IO ontology, OBI and CHMO already. So not that many new classes are actually needed. Um, and unfortunately, in this pipeline, uh, I'm doing this with um, diagrams.io, uh, so it is uh, not uh, easily convertible to uh, OWL, so this has to be done manually. Um, but uh, more importantly, um, in, in this regard, uh, NMR spectroscopy uh, is special because there's also um, the NMR um, CV, controlled vocabulary, that contains a lot of terms that we could reuse. Um, however, if we want to um, have more depth in terms of axiomatization, this uh, becomes a little bit problematic because uh, NMRCV is by definition only a taxonomy and doesn't want to have uh, axioms other than just subclass of axioms. So there is still an open question whether it is a, maybe a good idea to uh, define those new classes, not within uh, a new ontology itself, but extending CHMO and kind of having a NMR spectroscopy submodule, because uh, as you can see, um, main classes like the pulse NMR spectroscopy is already in a CHMO, whereas the subclasses are a little bit, well, um, they, they, they could be optimized in terms of uh, their label and their definition but uh, CHMO um, would be a perfect place. Uh, however, this needs to be discussed more with domain experts. That's why we're here. So we can discuss on this maybe later. Um, yeah, and now coming to uh, Raman spectroscopy real quick. Um, the workflow is the same when it comes to defining the scope and um, the uh, competency questions and reusing design patterns and terms from existing ontologies, also mostly OBO ontologies. Again, CHMO um, is uh, a place where we can find a lot and also uh, OBI because of the rather um, elaborate uh, assay branch of OBI. And we already did uh, make some new term requests um, uh, for, for terms that we want, would like to have, for instance, uh, molarity uh, as being a subclass of concentration and PETO. Um, and for Raman, we had the idea to not just have a Raman ontology, a Raman spectroscopy ontology, but rather a vibrational spectroscopy ontology to also uh, cover the other vibrational spectroscopies like um, infrared, but starting with Raman first um, to kind of uh, narrow the scope. Um, and uh, the same again, uh, an approach of uh, gathering terms via spreadsheet and discussing them via meetings. But uh, since we do not have a controlled vocabulary like NMRCV in here, uh, it seems, seemed a good idea to, uh, get familiar with uh, the ontology development kit. So um, we set up a repository that is linked in here uh, with an ODK. And uh, we also already used um, a still beta feature of ODK. It's going to be um, within the new ODK release um, that is supposed to drop uh, to the end of October, where we use also a TSV template approach because within the calls we had with the domain experts, um, we had the same uh, feedback that for domain experts, um, running a uh, prodigy and, and having to work with prodigy and having to get familiar with prodigy is a rather steep learning curve curve and for first of all defining and, and um, agreeing upon um, uh, the the standard label that is to be used and also on the definition um, using uh, a table based approach like TSV CSV or Excel is much easier and uh, luckily uh, the ODK with uh, robot uh, inside allows um, to set this up rather easily and uh, you can build the owl file as a component um, from the TSV so that's what we did here and how we did it you can uh, see in the repository 
And that's basically it. Oliver, and, Oliver no. um, indeed, I would like to pick up uh, from where Alistair left yesterday. And it's going to be a work in progress uh, I'm showing. And uh, also, I'm trying to bridge towards the ontologies. Um, you have seen that slide uh, before. You also saw that slide before. And the one thing I would like to point you towards is that here we have these properties. And here we have what types uh, would be expected there. And of course, text, you can write anything. But when it says defined term, then we are entering the domain ontologies that we are talking about today and yesterday. So um, the um, bioschema uh, was uh, already mentioned uh, is implemented in MassBank. And actually, we started that many, many years ago, and we hacked something up. Um, and then it took quite a few years until somebody said, oh, what you put there is quite rubbish. The good side is that then we had our first consumer of that metadata before nobody really noticed. Um, so basically, uh, the way we had it back then has hardly any or no ontology terms in there. And that is something we would like to beef up and improve. Um, the, the benefits that you get there is uh, that uh, you can run interesting uh, queries on data collections like that. And I have to say that is uh, something that is really uh, that I really like that data gets used and reused and we would like to make uh, that as possible um, as, as easy as possible uh, for people out there for harvesting and collecting that. So, um, the profile creation process, that's something that's going to be important for us in, in NFDI for chem and then trying to get the adoption uh, increased is uh, that you come up with uh, the use cases, the stories, why you would like to have something. Then you come up with the mapping, collecting the terms and the properties that you want to have in there, develop the profiles. Uh, there will be mock-ups where people use the prototypes uh, that gets discussed uh, and then uh, at some stage uh, you get to the adoption and application uh, in, in the end. So uh, what we are going to try in uh, NFDI for Chem is that there is already a number of profiles in there from sample, chemical substance, molecular entity, protocol in the lab to data set. Uh, that we would like to reuse and uh, push in the uh, resources uh, that we have. Um, maybe we would like to develop new types and profiles. Did we lose him? Stefan? Looks like he's frozen. Hmm. Germany and internet connection. Nah, really it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got the chat message. Back in three. <laughs> Seems like something has uh, crashed. Well, then we can start our discussion now. Yeah, we can already. <laughs> or we can we... discuss the previous talk for a minute more. Sorry, but uh, I got kicked out there, and Oliver is trying to make sure that uh, doesn't happen again. So basically, uh, we identified that we would like to have um, more specific data set uh, information. And back then, we called that the analytical or spectral data set. And you would see in a moment that uh, this was not really uh, necessary. Um, next slide. Um, so the, the questions, the use cases that uh, we are probably going to have is uh, to find specific types of spectra from specific instruments or maybe from specific uh, compounds and natural products, or maybe the in silico derived uh, unpredicted spectra, or maybe something from uh, specific uh, NMR uh, areas. Um, next slide. And uh, this is what the website MassBank looks to uh, people. So there's uh, spectral data in both graphical and text form. 
there is chemical data again in graphical and text form and then there is uh, metadata about the record itself next slide and uh, what we then can do within the uh, masking profiles we can for example make sure that one record is contained in a data catalog which is the entirety of masking next slide and then uh, we can also and this is something new that we didn't have last year uh, we can say that um, a particular data set or spectrum is about a molecular entity and the other way uh, around we can say that a molecular entity is the subject of a specific measured uh, spectrum in there so this allows to strike the connections between them. And here we have uh, the uh, mock-up of uh, how we aim to include uh, defined terms. Uh, for example, uh, that this is about mass spectrometry data. And uh, then below that, um, oh, no, uh, not below that, okay. And then below we, we saw the record uh, metadata. Next slide. And uh, this is uh, the uh, what I wanted to mention, the measurement technique, which is also uh, coming from uh, the ontology, and then also properties or variables that are measured, uh, like the retention time, are also coming from uh, an ontology. And this can, and that was new to me that we learned that over the last weeks, this can already be uh, encoded in the existing data set thing, so we wouldn't need a new uh, specific profile on that. Uh, so we are currently um, soliciting more examples, more mockups, and uh, one of them will be the NM archive. Next slide. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Oliver mentioned that, um, no, uh, Philip mentioned that there is uh, the uh, blurry division between data and metadata uh, because uh, René, who created the mockup, all of a sudden came up with adding uh, the MZ and intensity arrays right into what I thought would be the metadata, but then here it already is the data. So that's something interesting to talk about. Why shouldn't we include that if we can? Next slide. And uh, that is the promised example from the NM archive team. Uh, they have contributed that slide to the slide deck, uh, and they actually uh, are embedding even more uh, of these um, bioschema uh, profiles into the uh, NM archive, so they already have the notion of the sample, they have the notion of the project in there, so all of these are uh, already considered. So we already have two spectral, maybe three spectral resources that can easily embed and provide that for harvesting, for example, to the overarching search. Uh, and I would also be uh, interested to find uh, some of these knowledge graph people who uh, can import uh, that and then uh, come up with uh, an interesting question that you can actually answer with that. Next slide. Um, so one of the good things is that we have the validators out there. This one was shown by uh, Alistair yesterday. It basically uh, says that the data can be extracted. Next slide. And the Bioschemas validator it is also looking at the recommended and optional uh, information, and then it's creating you reports on your data, and that helps to uh, improve uh, the quality of the um, information that you actually have in there. So we hope to get the warnings down to zero uh, with that one, and that is also something that all the other implementations uh, will then be checked against. Next one. Um, the reaction type, this is just a sneak preview. Uh, that would be a new profile because that doesn't exist yet. There's prior art from back in 2019 that uh, I would like to restart and um, get uh, finished to some shape. Next slide. Because there's plenty of reactions out there. That could be uh, from Chemotion, Wikipedia. The RIA database is already uh, covered from uh, back then in the old days. And who knows if we can also get in touch with the Open Reaction Database people if they also would like to uh, provide that metadata. Next one. Uh, there is going to be a, a bio hackathon. Uh, we could also say a chem hackathon. We could hijack that uh, in uh, December, organized by Elixir Germany. Um, so uh, we are currently preparing uh, a proposal uh, that uh, will then make up the work plan for this week. Uh, so if any of uh, you are interested uh, to join, uh, then 
uh, we can make more bioschemas in NFDI happen. Final slide. Uh, yes, that is what is said. Uh, reach out to the uh, neighboring consortia. A few of them are here in the workshops. I'm looking forward if uh, you would like to uh, join that uh, hackathon initiative and if we can get uh, some of these ideas also in the section metadata and provenance. Thank you very much. I think that was the last one. Yes.